the challenge of the Yukon. On, King! On, you huskies! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserve law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. It was early spring in Whitehorse City. The swift current of the river carried huge ice blocks down its course, and the days were getting longer. Snow still covered the ground, however, and a crowd in front of Jacques de Vere's general store was waiting for the mail coming by dog team from the north. It was long overdue. Mrs. Anderson, who stood talking to Sergeant Preston, was particularly worried. Oh, I hope nothing has happened. I'm expecting some valuable furs from my husband. He's up north hunting, isn't he? Yes, and they've had wonderful luck. He wired me that he was sending a rare skin to me on this mail trip. A pure white moose. Well, he was lucky to bag one of those. An albino moose skin is something few people have seen. In fact, I've never seen one as long as I've been in the Yukon. I wonder what accounts for albinos. It's just lack of pigment in the skin, isn't it? Yes. It's a freak of nature. In almost every species, now and then, one is born to a white. Look, here comes dog team with dog driver. Look. That's funny. That's the mail team in sled, but Jed Higgins isn't with it. The team she's coming in alone. Look. Jed's not there. What happened to him? Oh, oh there. Jed Higgins, something has happened to him, no? The mail's been robbed. Nothing's here. Isn't my package there either? Everything's been taken. King, get the team ready, boy. Are you going to try to find this Higgins? We'll go back over his trail and see if there are any traces of him. I will go with you, Sergeant. Jed, he is my good friend. Jacques accompanied Preston as he backtracked along the trail the mailman's team had taken. They had traveled about five miles when suddenly King darted off into the bushes far ahead. Oh! Oh, you huskies! Find something, boy? Uh, he is off the trail behind these uh, trees. Look! Yes, there's strange tracks here, too. Come on, Jacques. Let's see what he's found. Uh, well, look, there is blood on the snow. What'd you find, King? Oh, it's Jed. Uh, he is dead. Look at his head, Sergeant. Somebody murdered him and used a hatchet. I will. I will put his body on this sled, no? Wait. I want King to follow this trail. Here, King. Pick it up, boy. Follow these tracks, King. Now, Jacques, you get Judd's body onto the sled. I'll follow King. Look, he is going towards the river. I will come after you as soon as I get him on this sled. Sir. All right. Wait, King. I'm coming. When Jacques caught up to Preston and King... He found them at the river bank. Well, there's nothing you can do about it, boy. Here's where the trail ends. You get away in the boat, yeah? There's no way of trailing him from here. He was smart enough to cover his trail by taking to the river. Must have used a heavy boat to get through these blocks of ice. Yeah, there is no way that you can trace him now, Sergeant, huh? King will remember his scent. That's about all we have to go on for a while. <laughs> yes, old fella. You're the only one who'll know him when you see him. During the following weeks, two more murders took place, a gold miner and a trapper. Both times, the pattern was the same. The men were killed with a hatchet and robbed, and King followed the trail to the riverbank. Preston checked with Jacques de Vere. You're sure, Jacques, that no one has tried to trade in furs that we know were stolen? I have watched very careful, Sergeant. Only trappers I know would come in with the usual catch. You have no more trace of the killer than before, huh? I'm convinced it's a white man, that's about all. These robberies seem to be planned carefully, and whoever it is knows how to cover his trail very cleverly. I doubt that an Indian or an Eskimo would dare to rob the mails. It is very funny he does not try to sell the furs. An Eskimo or an Indian would. This man is waiting until he gets enough loot, and then he'll probably take it to the States and get rid of it. Ah, this last murder, that was very bad. To kill a man in his sleep and use a hatchet, oh. It's too bad everybody can't have a dog like King protection. <laughs> yes, old fella, I'm talking about you. 
You've had the scent of this criminal three times. You'll know him if we don't. Well, look. It is White Feather. He should not be out. The doctors say he will die any day now. Hello, White Feather. What are you doing out of bed like this? Huh? Hello, White Feather. I thought you were sick. Me hear you in town, Sergeant. Me want talk. Well, why didn't you send for me? I could have gone over to your cabin. White Feather and you, good friends. White Feather won't ask favor. <coughs> Why, of course. I'll do anything I can for you. Sometime you go past Twin Creek Crossing? Yes. I often go that way to Dawson. Do you want something from there? Me want go Indian Village. Five mile west of there. Oh, but White Feather, you are too sick to travel. You must stay quiet. White Feather, no get better. Me no. White Doctor, no can cure. <coughs> I'll Why do you want to go to the Indian me. village? Me, me got friend there, named Swiftwater. Him say new medicine man come to village. Him magic. He's one of them. Maybe he, he kill an evil spirit that make White Feather sick. Ah, oh, but White Feather, no. You better stay here and rest and take care of yourself. That trip might be too much for you. No, me go. Well, if you're determined to go anyway, I'll be glad to take you. What's so wonderful about this new medicine man? Swiftwater tell him things him do. Him turn campfire green. Make wood go boom. Him have magic blanket. White moose skin oh. from mountain god. Ah, you should not listen to such Just things. Just a minute, Shark. I'll be glad to tell you, White Feather. Can you go tomorrow? Uh, me go soon as you go. Good. I'll pick you up at your cabin in the morning and take you right to the village. Sergeant, my friend, me know you do. Go back and rest now, so you'll be strong enough for the trip tomorrow. Uh, yeah, see you morning. Uh, Sergeant, you have the too big heart. You always do such favor. Why you take him there? He's going to die. I know, Shark, but if I don't take him, we'll get someone else to do it. And didn't you hear what he said about that medicine man? Ah, those faker. He turn fire green with copper salts, make wood explode with the bullets inside branches. It wasn't that that I was interested in. It was the magic blanket he's using to impress the Indians. The white moose skin. White moose skin? Sacred. I am so stupid. You think it is one Mrs. Andrews wait for when the man she is robbed? Perhaps. Anyway, I'm going to find out where he got it. And King's going to help me, aren't you, boy? <laughs> You ready, Sergeant? We go. Well, you're all ready, White Feather. Sure you'll be warm enough? Me warm. Lots heavy blanket. Sit here on the sled and wrap some of my blankets around you, too. Uh, 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 this good. I've decided to go into the Indian village with you. I'm interested in this new medicine man. Will that be all right? You not like White Doctor? Oh, I'm not sick. I just want to see him do his magic tricks. Him not like white man see him. Oh, did he say that? Swiftwater say him not want white man. Spoil magic. Well, maybe I can wait back at the village until he starts his tricks and then come in and watch. I won't spoil his magic, you know that. You come. White feather not tell. <coughs> oh, here, you'd better lie down on the sled. Yeah, that's better. All right, we're off. On, King! On, you husky! Here we are, White Feather. Do you think you can get into the village alone from here? You no come with me? I think I'd better wait until the medicine man starts. I'll wait back in the woods here with King and join you later. Did the trip tire you? All right? No, no. no, me not tired. It's a long trip for a sick man. Well, I'll see you later. All right, King. On, you husky! Preston, with King at his side, approached the village cautiously when the tom-toms announced the gathering of the tribe at one end of the village. The Indians were gathered about a fire, chanting. The medicine man, who danced wildly at one side of it, wore a queer headdress of horns and feathers. As he danced and chanted, he threw something on the flames that turned them a bluish green. 
Preston, watching the smoke of the fire, selected a spot downwind from the dancing figure. Come on, King. Stay close, boy. Heel. As King got the scent of the medicine man, a low growl rumbled in his throat. The Mountie laid a restraining hand on him and felt the fur of his back bristling. White Feather joined them quietly when his friend Swiftwater came. He tell Swiftwater you come. Him say all right, you friend White Feather. Well, thank you, Swiftwater. How long has this medicine man been here? Him come one moon back. He soon now him make wood go boom. Drive out evil spirit that make White Feather sick. Is that the wood you mean? The sticks he's throwing on the fire? Mm. Listen. Quiet, boy. Does he always wear that white fur around him? Uh, that magic blanket. White moose. Him get from God of Mountain. What's he going to do with that hatchet? Him do hatchet dance. The medicine man's dance grew wilder as he swung the hatchet around his head. Suddenly, as if by accident, the hatchet flew through the air straight at the Mountie's head. Preston caught the blow in his arm. And it was at that moment that King sprang. <laughs> Where he throw hatchets? Hit man in the dog! Kill dog! Kill dog! Get your hands off that dog! Hold him, King! Hold him, boy! I'm coming! That dog try kill medicine man! He's no medicine man! All right, King! Get back! You see, Swiftwater? He's not Indian. He's a white man. See where King tore his shirt? Him not Indian? No. Watch him, King! Now, you, get up and be careful. That dog will jump you again if you don't do what I tell you. Take him away. Don't let him at me. You're quite accurate with a hatchet, aren't you? It, it slipped out of my hand. Swiftwater, pull that fancy headdress off him. No, no maybe him magic. He's a thief and a murderer. There's nothing magic about him. Pull it off. All right. Oh, no wonder you tried to hit me with that hatchet. I arrested you for robbery some years ago, not in this territory. That ain't true. Where did you get that white moose skin? I shot it. Up north. Oh. I think we'll take a little trip over to your cabin. Where does he live, Swiftwater? Him stay in cabin. Over there. Bring him along, King. Watch him, boy. All right, I'll come. But keep that dog off me. Come along, Swiftwater. Him say in, in, go, in cabin. Evil spirit kill him. That was just a good way to keep people out of it. The only evil spirit around here is the one King's guarding right now. Is this it? This cabin. Your hand. It bleed. No, I don't think the cut's deep. My park has saved me. Bring him in, King. Here's a match, Swiftwater. Light that candle. Huh? Get away from me, you cur. You'd better watch out. King may take away more than a piece of your shirt next time. Open up that chest, Swiftwater. Over there on the floor. It have lock. Can't open. Wait a minute. I'll shoot it off. That's it, boy. Let him sneak out. Open the chest, Swiftwater. Gold furs. And a government mailbag. Where'd you get this? Up in the mountains where you shot the white moose? I could have got away if this dog hadn't jumped me. I didn't have King when I arrested you before. Now you see, we're a double threat to people like you. All right, King. We're taking him back to town. <laughs> Yes, old fellow. You recognized his scent the minute you got it. There'll be no more hatchet murders in this territory now. Good work, boy. <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Hal Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.